Many years ago, in a popular village called Oringo, there was a bustling market known as Oringo Market. This market is the largest market in the entire village. It was renowned for having the best cook in the entire kingdom, which drew many people from other villages. Whenever there was a special ceremony in the village of Oringo and the neighboring village, they would employ cooks from this market because of their special cooking skills. But this amazing food wasn't just offered by every woman in the village. It was one woman named Oshite. Oshite is a popular woman known not just for her amazing food, but also for being a staunch feminist who believed in women working for their money. She took her food business seriously that within six months of this business, she was known throughout the entire village and beyond. Oshite's childhood was marked by hardship in a family of four where her lazy father would often argue with her hard-working mother over money. Despite the challenges, Oshite's mother, skilled in cooking, taught her and her sister the art of preparing delicious meals. Cooking is a good business, her mother would say. As long as your food tastes nice, people will patronize you. But Oshite aimed higher than her mother's small stand. She dreamed of owning the best restaurants in the market. She worked so hard that she earned the name Oshite, which means an amazing cook. The market buzzed with gossip about Oshite's cooking, how it was different from others, attracting a constant stream of customers. As her business boomed, so did her pride. She was so proud of herself that she saw other cooks as inferior to her. Her customers were always rushing her food, eager to eat, and always came back for more. They were addicted to eating her food. Other women in the market wondered why people were always coming and suspected that Oshite may have done something to them. But they could only talk and cry in their empty shops because they barely had customers. They could only sell if Oshite's food was finished or if she didn't cook that day. Oshite was always the first at the market, arriving even before her workers. She had a peculiar habit of washing her pots with a special water kept in a secret room ensuring utmost cleanliness. No one touches my pot, she insisted. Cleanliness is key in this business, she always said. Her helpers were surprised that she wouldn't let them clean the pots, but they didn't really mind, since they thought their madame was just a clean freak. Meanwhile, a newly wedded couple, the Amadis, moved to Ringo village. Mr. Amadi, who was a construction worker, was always too busy working on site, he barely had time to eat at home. His wife, Mrs. Amadi, would often bring his meals to his workplace, caring for him. Happy Amadi would enjoy his wife's food and other workers would tease him, telling him how much his wife loved him to bring food for him at the construction site. But when Mrs. Amadi fell ill with a severe flu, she couldn't cook anymore and Mr. Amadi started buying snacks and street food, but he wasn't satisfied. One day, Mr. Amadi ventured into the market and discovered Oshite's restaurant, bustling with customers enjoying her delicious ofowere and fufu. Oshite's restaurant featured varieties of Igbo dishes, including ofensala, oba, ofonubu, abacha, and lots more. There was even pan wine from the best pan wine tapa, along with bush meats from the best hunters. Men flooded the whole place and Mr. Madi was so curious why the place was bubbling in that manner. He ordered a meal there and immediately understood why. He was hooked. He became a regular, always paying promptly and even generously tipping Oshite. After some weeks, Amadi's wife recovered and resumed cooking. But she noticed that her husband was no longer eating her food, even when he brought food for him at the construction site. He would give excuses that he had eaten or was not hungry. Soon, she trailed him one day and found out that he was always eating at Oshite's restaurant. Puzzled, she wondered why he preferred Osh Oshite's food over hers, given his previous love for her cooking. One day, Mrs. Amadi decided to surprise her husband at work with his afternoon meal. When she arrived, the security guard recognized her and warmly thanked her for the delicious food she regularly brought. Madam, it's been a while. Thanks for the amazing food you cook for us. Because of your meals, we always have something good to eat in the afternoon, the guard said. Mrs. Amadi was taken aback and couldn't hide her surprise. 
She politely thanked the guard and talked to herself. So all this time, the food I've been sending my husband, he's been sharing it with others without even tasting it. I can't believe this. Interrupting her thoughts, the security officer continued. Madam, don't worry about your husband. He doesn't go hungry. He eats at Soshite's place, the guard said. Thanking the guard once more, Mrs. Amadi confirmed her suspicion and headed to Oshite's place. Upon arrival, she was struck by the long queue of customers eagerly buying food. She noticed men, especially calling out for meals with smiles, as Oshite served them. Amadi's wife wondered, why are there so many men here? Don't they have wives or daughters who cook for them? Why is this shop so crowded when there are other nearby restaurants? What makes this woman's food so special that everyone prefers it? Even my husband seems obsessed with it, Mrs. Amadi wondered. Observing her husband who appeared content with a full belly, Mrs. Amadi felt a mix of anger and disappointment. She walked up to him and said, So you told me not to cook anymore and now you prefer eating out. You've changed so much. You used to say my cooking was the best. But now you don't enjoy meals at home. I don't know what to do. I'm scared and confused, she confessed tearfully. Moved by his wife's sadness, Mr. Amadi apologized. I'm so sorry, my love. I don't know what, what has come over me. I try to resist, but it's like an addiction. I can't help it. Each time I always feel like eating here. Please forgive me, Amadi begged his wife sincerely. Mr. Amadi sighed and forgave her husband, only if he promised not to eat at Oshite's place again. Amadi agreed, but he didn't know that there was something more to the food Oshite served. Oshite had a secret. Each time her customers washed their hands, she told the customers not to pour out their hand wash water after eating. She collects it from them. When asked, she claims she dislikes dealing with dirty water and insists that no one can keep her canteen cleaner than herself. People first thought that she was just a clean freak, but the more people thought about it, the more it became suspicious. Mr. Amadi, who despite promising his wife that he wouldn't eat at Oshite's place, saw himself eating the food again and again, and he found it very strange. He loves his wife so much and wouldn't want to make her unhappy. Plus, his wife is even an amazing cook. He was sure that there was something about Oshite that wasn't adding up, so he decided to investigate. Azuka, one of Oshite's workers, always talked about how weird it was for her madame to dispose the washing hand water herself. But people ignored her. But Mr. Amadi was interested. So one day, after eating at Oshite's restaurant, he secretly called out Azuka and questioned her. Azuka didn't know much, but she confessed that she found her madam weird and also revealed that her madam wouldn't let them clean the pot or make the food. That made Amadi even more interested in the case. So he came up with a plan. He planned to spill the washing hand water and see Oshite's reaction. The next day after washing his hands, he was about to pour out the water when Oshite rushed to him, insisting that she would dispose the water herself. But Amadi insisted that he would throw away the water. Oshi Oshite refused, forcing him to give her the wash hand water. As Mr. Amadi sat down to think about the whole event, he decided that the next day he would pour away his wash hand water. The next day, after eating and washing his hands, he immediately poured the water away. Oshite shouted from where she was watching, Chimo! and ran to Amadi's seat. But before she could get there, he already poured out the water. She shouted as though her word had crumbled. Why did Oshite shout in such manner over something as irrelevant as a hand wash water? Is there more to it? What secret is she hiding? Is it connected to why people are always flooding her restaurant? Find out in part 2. Thank you for watching today's African story. Join our community by subscribing to our channel today. See you in the next story. Bye for now.